Welcome back. This week we are doing another paint your style challenge from Instagram and I'm starting by picking my color palette. I'm also painting on Arches paper. It's their 140 pound paper that I just get cut down by a local paint shop. I picked a pretty green and blue heavy palette with some neutrals and you're also getting a sneak peek of my next video to come out which is the swatching of my studio trays a few people had requested it after seeing my watercolor collection video and so i filmed and edited it with part one coming out in just a few days i was careful in my color selection because i wasn't sure about how this painting was going to go it was quite out of what I feel comfortable with the paint your style challenges often are only one of them was sort of in my comfort zone of painting and so as always I went and I swatched because that is the best way to make sure like the color palette's cohesive I chose three pure PG 23s one green earth that isn't actually PG 23 two other greens four blue teals, a pink, and three neutrals for this palette, which is a very like blue-green heavy palette, but in the end it was exactly what I needed for this painting. I wasn't sure that I needed the pink, but I was quite happy I had it. So the first color I swatched is Toad by Cosmic Creations, which is a pure PG-23, which is Green Earth. The next one is Cosmic Creations Green Fog, which is another PG-23. Then we have Stone Ground Antigua Green Earth, which is another pure PG-23. And then we have Schmincke Green Earth, which actually isn't a pure PG-23, it's a mix of pigments, followed by Roman Small's Olive Green Light. So all these greens sort of fell in the same sort of like green-brown family, but were all different in tone, and that's sort of what I was going for. I knew that I was going to have to build this up in layers, and so having a whole bunch of greens that were sort of similar in undertone but were different in color was important to me. Next was Roman Smell's Autumn Green which was sort of the outlier green as it's a yellow green. Then we have Artistic Isle Sky. We have Supervision Blue Brown which is a granulating turquoisey blue. We have Nibs Rain which is very similar to blue brown but is m more turquoise and the like dark granulation comes out less it's more subtle and then we have grace star by artistic isle so with the color selection for the teals it was more that i wanted colors that i knew mixed well together to be able to build up the sky but i also needed some that had opacity all these swatches were done on Lennox Cotton paper by Legion, and I labeled them with a fountain pen filled with Ferris wheel press ink. This pink is Putty by Beyond Indigo, and I like it because I use it a lot when I'm tinting browns. And I knew that I didn't have the brown I wanted in my palette for this, and so there was going to be some playing around with browns. We have J. Estelle Wood. And then we have Nibs Cien, which is sort of a yellow brown that granulates. And then we have Cosmic Creations Buttercup, which is a sort of falls between buff titanium and like a jaune brilliant one. And I find that I use it more than either of those colors.
palette wise I decided I was going to use the Meaden ceramic palette for mixing because I knew I was going to have to color mix and I like this one because it has both a whole bunch of wells and it has brush rests and then for brushes I decided on the Tintoretto synthetic squirrel brushes in a two and a six and the Cotman zero brush in a round they're sort of the brushes I most lean towards when painting and they all work incredibly well. Um, there was a whole bunch of layering in this painting. This painting was all layers and a lot of color mixing and sort of just dropping colors into each other and letting them spread out. Especially with the sky, I sort of just let the colors do their own thing. And it was a similar process for the trees where I mapped out where I wanted color to be and then I just sort of let the colors do what they wanted to do. I did map out the waterfall placement though in the final design the waterfall did not end up there. So I'm going to leave you here to just watch the painting process and I hope you enjoy just getting to watch the rest of the painting come together. It was definitely a lot of fun to do. I always enjoy these challenges as challenging as they are because they are so different from what I do day to day and they just push my skill set in a very different way. If you like this sort of time-lapse painting content feel free to subscribe. I do this sort of content twice a week if everything goes well. Um, I also try to post on Instagram daily. This channel also gets handmade paint unboxings and color comparisons and sort of all the fun of having a giant watercolor palette and so getting to play around with a bunch of colors. So if you love being able to look at a bunch of watercolors, this really is the place for you. Um, yeah, feel free to subscribe.